the camera that is going to be uh, hopefully recording every single uh, lecture this semester. That's separate from the one in the back. If you need a reminder, the one in the back, uh, that's only going to be for the first three weeks. Uh, and so if you're, if you're recently re registered, make sure that if you don't want to be in the camera shots, make sure that uh, you don't uh, uh, walk in front of that camera or that camera up here. And I think uh, from, the, from the view that I saw, it goes all the way over to there. So it's a wide angle shot. If you don't want your face in the camera, make sure that uh, you, you stay down there or something like that. Uh, so uh, to continue from what we were doing last week, uh, we introduced the programming basics. I gave a really quick demonstration on the compiling process. Uh, and we, we ran through this uh, a little bit more complicated than a Hello World program that actually read some input, computed some output, and then, uh, then, uh, then output it to the user. Uh, we, uh, we ended up by uh, looking at the three basic types of variables that we'll focus on throughout the rest of the semester. Integers, int. Uh, floating point numbers, which are doubles. Uh, and char single characters, single ASCII text characters, uh, which are going to be uh, 128 common characters, capital A through Z, lowercase a through Z, punctuation, stuff like that. Uh, so to remind you of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, the, of these three basic variables, I've gone into code mode here, and I'm going to give you several lines where you can declare variables and set them equal to va values. So first of all, let's go ahead and declare an integer variable and set it equal to 10. So to do that, I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to use int because that's the type of variable. I don't have anything that this variable is standing for, so I'll go ahead and call it x for now. Uh, and normally that would be enough. If you wanted to leave it like that, that creates a variable. That variable is now living. You can assign it a value. You can print out its value. You can do whatever you want with it. As long as you are working with it as an integer, you would not be able to store 3.5 into that, for example. Uh, but it is a whole number. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, note the end, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the punctuation here. That there's a semicolon at the end of that declaration. If, on the other hand, as you want to do as in the comments uh, I, I, I put out here, you want to also set it equal to 10, you use an equal sign. And then that thing on the right hand side, well, it's a 10, uh, but we call those literals. So if you put in a number, 3.5, 10, 10.5, 3.145, 9, whatever, uh, those are called literals. They're just numbers that are hard coded into your program. So I've declared an integer variable and set it equal to 10. Now what you can do later on in your program, later on, you can always reset a variable's value. Right? So let me go ahead and reset the value of, of x to 20. Right? There's a difference in the variable now. This is why we call them variables. Why are they called variables? Because they can vary their value. Right? Uh, we call these things what they are because that's what they are. Uh, uh, in, uh, from, the, from the first line, to the second, the variable's value is 10. From the second line onward, its value has now changed to 20. What's happened to that 10? It's been thrown away. So you've overwritten the value that's stored in that variable. Right? Uh, you, uh, if, if later on I set it equal to 30, then between, uh, between setting it to 20 and setting it to 30, if I print it out or do anything with it, it'll have a value of 20. Right? So you can set, reset as many times as you want. Let's go ahead and create, uh, declare, and set uh, a double, double value, a uh, variable, excuse me. So here, I would change how I declare it by using the keyword double instead. Now, I can't use x again if I'm in the same program, because you can't have two different variables with two different types but the same name. We'll get into what's called scoping later on in more detail. But let me just go ahead and call it pi, because I want it to represent the, vari uh, the value pi. 3.1415, or actually I'll leave it as 3.14. Then later on you can reset it to 3.1415 if you want a, 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 a more accurate variable uh, value of pi. All right. Now let's go ahead and declare a, 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 a character, character uh, variable. There we go. So what would I use in this case? Char. That's my keyword to declare a character variable. Again, remember, a, a lot of things are going to be abbreviated because 40, 50 years ago, uh, bytes mattered. If you, could, uh, if you could get away by eliminating a few bytes, 
few bytes multiplied by hundreds of instances, that saves you hundreds of, uh, of bytes. And uh, collectively, it saves you uh, hundreds of thousands of bytes. And when you're measuring disk space in kilobytes, then yeah, that, ma that makes a big difference. Today, it doesn't make that big of a difference, uh, but we still have it. Uh, we, we still have, we're, we're living with that legacy, basically. Uh, first initial, there we go. And my first initial is going to be C. So if it's a single character, to get a single character literal, a single character value, you use single quotes. Uh, you, you might remember from last time we used double quotes. That was to denote an entire string, multiple characters. But when there's a single character, you use single quotes. All right? Uh, and th again, this equal sign is, we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail in a second, but that's the assignment operator. It means take whatever's on the right hand side and put it into the variable on the left hand side. Another difference to note here is that uh, on the, the same example again at the top, when I declared it and set it, I used int x equals 10. After I had declared it, I do not use another int there because it's already de been declared, it's already, be it's already alive, it already exists. I don't need to redeclare it and say int x is equal to 20 again. In fact, that would be a syntax error. The compiler would not allow you to do that. Because it would say, wait a second, you're trying to declare two variables, same type, same name, in the same scope. You can't do that. Right. Yeah, question? We, uh, there is no string type in C. All right, so if you're familiar with other, uh, uh, other programming languages where strings are what are called first class citizens, uh, strings are not first class citizens in C. Um, the, the, there is no string type. Instead, to do strings, we're going to have to have arrays and uh, null terminated uh, st character arrays, which comes much later. Don't worry about it. But string literals, the double quotes, you can start working with those now. Right? Good, good question. All right. All right, so those are just some quick examples here. Let's make some notes here. Style tip, right? So uh, don't use uh, non-descriptive names like, oh, I don't know, like I just did, x or a or my variable, right? Those have no semantic meaning. Now, if you're if you're doing a program where you're doing uh, maybe a Euclidean geometry and you've got uh, a coordinate, an x y coordinate. Well, sure, the, the x, y, the, those are understood variables for that application. Uh, if you're trying to compute coefficients to a, uh, a polynomial and the, the coefficients are a, b, and c, that might make sense to use those as variables because those are under, uh, understood and well understood math variables. Um, if, you, uh, if you are trying to compute the, uh, the, angular, uh, the angle between two vectors or something like that, usually you use the Greek letter theta to do that. You could write, uh, don't, don't write the Greek letter theta in your program because uh, uh, Greek is not directly supported, uh, but uh, you can write out the word theta. Theta is known by mathematicians, mathematics, to represent an angle, just like x and y are, and z are known to represent coordinate systems. But in general, don't use those if you know that you're not representing those things. If you're going to represent something like my first initial, what should you call it? First initial. If you want to uh, represent something that is like number of students, uh, good examples would include number of students. Right? You can abbreviate. Sometimes you can abbreviate, but you should generally avoid abbreviations. Uh, you are not paying by the character anymore. Uh, we, now we've got terabytes that are basically free data. Uh, number of students is just fine. Num students may okay. Uh, students, probably not a good idea because it represents a number of students, not the, the, the students themselves. Always name your variables what they represent. So name your variables after what they model or represent. Right. Avoid, in general, avoid, avoid abbreviations. Right. Now, there are some, are some abbreviations that you might think are universal. Uh, for example, if I said APR, what does that stand for? Uh, annual percentage rate, right? A lot of you knew that, because that's a common uh, thing to, uh, to, to hear about if you're in finance or something like that. A lot of you might not have heard of that before. Or it could be maybe ambiguous. 
uh, it, instead of APR, maybe you want to prefer the written out uh, annual percentage rate instead. Uh, and then there are, some, uh, there, there are some abbreviations, there are some acronyms that are domain specific. For example, if I were writing a program uh, to compute grades at a in a class at UNL, uh, everybody is identified by their NUID. If I were to go across state into Iowa, would they know what an NUID is? Probably not. <laughs> they probably have a, a ISID, right? Iowa State ID or wherever they, uh, whatever they use. Um, so avoid abbreviations because you can't necessarily assume that people that are going to be maintaining your code, looking at it, uh, and working with you have the same knowledge base. Write those things out, or uh, failing that, at least document them. All right. In general, avoid abbreviations and acronym acronyms. All right. I hope that's spelled correctly. If not, you can correct it. Right. Uh, also, uh, it's a use a consistent naming convention. For example, the naming convention that I have here was that I use all lowercase unless it was a compound word. The, one, the, the only example there was first initial. How did I write that out? First of all, you can't have white space in your variable names. If I went first space initial, the C programming language would interpret that as two different words. You can't do that. You have to shove all of your words together if it represents one thing. So what I did here to offset, if I just wrote first initial, right? Let me go ahead and write it really quick so that you can take a look at it. First, first initial, initial, there we go. All right, is that readable easily? No. Look at that versus what I did above, where I capitalized I. Which one of those is more easily readable? You, you don't have a space, so you don't know that the word begins and ends here, but you have a visual cue. This capitalization right here tells you this is the first word, this is the second word, or and then maybe the third word and fourth word, etc. That is known as upper camel, or sorry, lower camel casing. Uh, for example, uh, example, uh, and I'll go ahead and erase this and use lower camel casing. Sometimes it's called Pascal casing. Sometimes there are different uh, there are different names for this. It's a very old convention. Uh, that be basically gets over the uh, the the the, the, uh, uh, the shortcoming of programming languages not able to have that are not able to have uh, white space in their words. Sometimes you might see alternative uh, naming conventions where they have they have multiple words, say first initial, and then everything is lowercase, and to separate them they use an underscore. Uh, and th that's a very common naming convention. The reason I don't like to use it is, first of all, where's the underscore? It's all the way across over here on the keyboard, and you have to press the Shift key every single time. Think about typing these things out. If you had to put an underscore uh, between every word in a variable multiplied by however many lines you're using those variables in, that's a lot of putting the pinky on the Shift key and moving your finger across the keyboard. It slows you down, right? and it's also very prone to error. So that's an older convention, and if you want to follow that convention, that's perfectly fine, as long as you are consistent about it. You can't use lower camel casing, and then that's uh, lo lower underscore casing is what that, that's called, and then use lower underscore casing later on. This is more of a modern convention, and so that's why I'm going to use it consistently throughout this course. If you've got multiple words, the first letter, or the first word, uh, everything is lowercase, uh, except for the first uh, letter of each subsequent word. So lower, uh, that has a lowercase l, camel, and casing have uppercase c's on them. Other examples might include annual percentage rate, right? Or, I don't know, like I did before, number of students, right? Oops, back tick. There we go. Number of students. I capitalize the O, I capitalize the S. That gives a perfect visual cue of uh, separation of the words. Right? So that's the convention I would encourage you to use. Whatever convention you want to use, go ahead, be consistent about it. Okay. Any questions so far? No? OK. Uh, it's, there are some other rules, other rules. Right? You cannot uh, begin. Uh, or you cannot include white space in your variable names. 
you cannot uh, start a variable name with a number, but in general, general, avoid numbers in your variable names anyway. All right? Do not have uh, uh, do not have variable one, variable two, variable three. That is absolutely terrible style uh, because it doesn't tell you what those variables stand for. If you have variable one, variable two, variable three, and then later down in the program you've got variable one plus variable two, you go, whoa, what, what am I doing here again? What, do, what does variable one stand for? And maybe you go all the way back up here to the top of your program and you read, okay, that's what it stands for. Go all the way back down here and, okay, what, would, what was variable two again? I forget, right? Where, whereas if you name your variables what they stand for, then you don't have to be going uh, up and down your program uh, looking at what you uh, were trying to do, all right? Uh, on your hack the, uh, this week, you're going to be using variables latitude, longitude. Latitude A, latitude B, that's probably okay. Uh, or latitude origin, latitude destination. You're going to be computing uh, the air distance between the two latitude longitude points on the globe. So if you've got an origin and you've got a distant, uh, destination, those would be perfect names. Uh, less perfect would be latitude one, latitude two. Those are probably, uh, I mean, it tells you that they're, they're, they're the latitudes, but is it, are you going from one to two or were you going from two to one or what? Uh, that, that might be more difficult. Well, what is absolutely not acceptable is to name them A, B, C, D. Do not do that because it doesn't tell you anything about those variables. Right? So those, uh, th those, that's the style with respect to uh, variable names. Now let's go into operators. Right? So the first operator that you've already seen is the assignment operator. Right? It's the single equal sign. Right? And it basically means take the value on the right-hand side and place it into the variable on the left-hand side. There we go. So what does that mean? Uh, what implication does that have? It means that whatever's on the left side of that assignment operator has to be a variable. You can't put an expression on the left-hand side. You can't have a plus b equals 5, right? That's an algebra thing, right? That would be an algebra sentence. And this is code. This is not algebra. So the thing on the left-hand side always have to, has to be a variable. The thing on the right-hand side could be a variable, could be a literal, it could be an expression. And we'll get into uh, more complicated expressions here in a moment when we've got more operators to work with. Uh, some very simple arithmetic, uh, arithmetic operators, right? For example, plus and minus, right? You can use those. And that's simply the plus sign and then the hyphen on your QWERTY keyboard. Uh, for multiplication, what would it be? Asterisk, like we looked at last time. And the reason that it's an asterisk, or a star, we call those, or just multiplies, is because the usual mathematical notation that you use, the x or the center dot, uh, or uh, sometimes if you have X, x times y, you'll just write them x, y with, without, uh, with, without anything in between them. Those don't work in code. Uh, the uh, x does not exist on your keyboard. The center dot does not exist on your keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, and uh, uh, putting two variables together with no space, that's a different variable with a different name. So we have to use an asterisk for multiplication. What about division? Oh, yeah, what, 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 that, there's division. Is, uh, I heard that that was a forward slash. How do we remember? You read left to right, and are you leaning forward or are you leaning backwards? Remember that it's a forward slash. Backslash is something different. All right? Uh, our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All right? So they follow the same rules uh, for arithmetic. All right? So for example, what if I were to write the following? A plus B times C. There we go. How would you read that? Would I take, uh, say, that, say that the values were 10, 20, and 30. Would I go 10 plus 20 is 30, times 30, so it must be 900? Is that how arithmetic works? No, it's not how code works either. What? How do you, how do you uh, uh, evaluate this? Uh, what? <laughs> oh, no, pep, pep das? 
Oh, okay. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a mnemonic device. <laughs> uh, PEPDAS? PEMDAS? Okay, PEMDAS. There you go. Uh, uh, so what has the highest order of operations? Parentheses. Then multiplication, division, uh, left to right, right? Uh, and then uh, addition and subtraction. So the way that you would actually uh, do this is you would uh, uh, take B times C first. So 20 times 30, that's going to be 600. Then you would add that 10, 610. And that's exactly how it works in code. A compiler or a program will multiply B and C first and then apply addition. So uh, I won't write PEMDAS, uh, PEMDAS uh, but uh, I will observe uh, that this is not the same thing as uh, a plus, or, or sorry, a parenthesis A plus B times C. Now, by putting the parentheses there, you've changed the order of operations. Now it is A plus B first and then multiplied by C. So if you need uh, a, an operation to be elevated in its order of operations, just like algebra, you need to put the parentheses there. Right? And you, you can do that in code as much as you want, as long as if you've got an opening parenthesis, you have to have that closed parenthesis, and it has to be well balanced, just like any arithmetic expression. Yeah? Oh, OK. How, how does it know how to do this? It's smart. It's a computer. <laughs> no, the, 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 that's the short answer. The real answer is that the way that this actually happens is a compiler goes through and builds what's called an abstract syntax tree. Uh, and then it's, uh, the, and so it, it parses it out and says, OK, plus and multiplication. OK, I'm going to elevate this up. And it's, it's going to build this tree where it multiplies b times c first. And then it adds this. And, that, uh, and, then, uh, and then it generates the machine code to actually do it in that proper order. How, you can write it however you want. In fact, you should not worry about that low-level detail. You should, uh, you should write any expression that you want uh, with as many parentheses as you want th to make it ni look, look nice to a human. All right. All right. So that's not the same. Uh, you can, uh, uh, the uh, uh, multiplication, multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction using parentheses uh, can uh, change the order of operations. Right? And you can also negate variables and literals. So for example, if I wanted negative a plus b, I could do that. Right? Putting a, 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 that's called a unary operator. It operates on one variable. Plus is a binary operator. You have to have A plus B. You have to have two things to add them together. Uh, a minus B, that subtraction is a binary operation. It needs two things, a subtract, uh, B subtracted from A. But when it's used on a single variable, it simply negates that variable. It takes whatever's stored in A. If it's positive 10, then it uh, change, uh, changes the value for that expression to negative 10 and then adds B to it. Right? Uh, and you can, put uh, you can also put negative 10, of course. That, that, that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, there's also a, an integer division, right? which is represented by the percent sign. That's not percent, like uh, 50% or 70% uh, or something like that. Uh, is, uh, it, rep it represents the remainder of integer division. So to understand that, let's go ahead and just look at a few examples. Let me go ahead and write this out. So 5 divided by 2. Now this is elementary school integer division. 5 divided by 2, if you wrote it out long division-wise, what would it be? Five goes, uh, 2 goes into 5 how many times? 2 times. But then what's remaining? 1. That is the uh, uh, result of that operation. Uh, results in a value of 1. 1 is the remainder of 5 divided by 2 and divided by 2. I'll write it out in English there. Right? Uh, this is also read as 5 mod 2. Right? So if you ever heard, uh, or uh, i.e., mod is, mod is short for modulus. 
Don't worry about those technical details. If you ever do modular arithmetic, if you ever do modular uh, mathematics, finite fields, or whatever, then you'll um, need to know the proper terminology for all this stuff. But uh, the percent sign, it, you would read it as 5 mod 2. All right? Another example. What, it, what if I take 10 mod 3? What's the remainder? 10 divided by 3. What's the remainder after it? 1. It also results in 1. Uh, and let's look, look at another one. 11 mod 3 results in? 3 goes into 11 9 times with a remainder of 2. Right? One last one. What if I have 10 mod 2? What does that, oops, what does that result in? Good. 0. Zero remainder means that it goes into it even, uh, it, go, it, it divides it, right? So here's a nice way of determining whether or not something is even or odd. If you mod out by 2, you'll either get 0 or 1. If it's 0, then that means that's even. If you get 1, that means it was odd, right? Uh, is something divisible by 3? Take mod 3, and if the remainder is 0, then it was divisible by 3. Nice little tests that you can use like that, right? uh, One issue, however, is truncation. So when an integer is divided by another integer, the result is an integer. I'm going to put three, uh, three exclamation points like that. So let's go ahead and look at it like this. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe use one of those uh, uh, same examples there. Um, 11 divided by 3. Note that I didn't say mod there. And that is a forward slash. I'm taking 11 divided by 3. Normally, that would be what? 3.66666, all repeated, right? But 11 is an integer. 3 is an integer. So when I take 11 divided by 3, the result has to be an integer, right? This is normally, is normally, uh, what was it? 3.6666 dot, 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 right? Uh, but since the result must be an integer. The result is actually, what do you think? Three. Right. You might think four. Uh, and uh, if you're thinking four, then you're kind of thinking rounding, right? That it's rounded up. That's not what is happening here. What hap what's happening here is something called truncation, meaning that the, uh, the program takes this 3.66666, uh, and it says, well, this can only be an integer. So I'm going to take the integer part, the whole part, 3, and I'm going to take the, uh, the floating point part, the, the fractional part, 0.66666, and I'm going to cut it out and throw it away. All I'm left with is the whole part over here, 3. Right? Uh, so it is actually 3 because uh, the program truncates uh, the, um, the value. It throws away the fractional part. And this is just a quirk of C. It's all also in, in uh, several other languages uh, that are not dynamically typed. If you have a, an integer and an integer and any operation in between, it's got to be an integer. But that's OK for everything else. Integer plus an integer, is, well, that's got to be an integer. Uh, integer subtracted an integer, that's got to be an integer. So the only, uh, uh, if you multiply an integer by an integer, that's going to be an integer. There's no pro problems there at all. The only problem that comes in when, is when it's in uh, when you use division here. Yeah? Is white space required when we put in the operators after the before and after? Generally not, but it's a good idea to put a space in there so it's readable. 11 divided by 3 and smashing that all together, that's less readable. Right? And depending on the fonts that you use and the background that you use, uh, like uh, w uh, one of the most common issues that people have with connecting to their Samba share is not recognizing that as a 1 in the URL because their, their browser's uh, font, uh, they, they think it's an L, right? And so if, uh, depending on uh, you know, if this is all shoved together and it's a small font or whatever, you might interpret that forward slash as a 1. So it would be 300, uh, or uh, 1,113, right? But if there's a space there, you can certainly see the difference. So make sure that put in good white space. There's another question over there? No? OK. All right. So it throws away the fractional part. Uh, if, if you do need the fractional part, then you must uh, perform 
what is called on perform on explicit typecast. All right, so let's go back into code mode here so that I can demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and create two variables here, a and b, and I'll set them equal to 10 and 20. Double c is equal to a divided by b. There we go. Nice little piece of code. I'm going to take a divided by b and put it into a double. Now a double can hold a fractional value, right? It can hold 0 0.5, which is what I want in this case. But I've got an integer divided by an integer. So what's going to happen is truncation. What's ultimately stored in C? 0, 0.0 is stored in C, in the variable C. And we don't want that. I want that fractional part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an explicit typecast. I'm going to temporarily change the type of at least one of the variables uh, so that it plays nicely with uh, the division division operator. Right? So the way that I'm going to do that is like as follows. Double C is equal to double A divided by B. All right? Now this results in 0 0.5. The way that you read this is, I'm not changing a. a is still an integer. But in this expression, I'm temporarily treating a as a double, so that when I have a double divided by an integer, the result can be a double. You can do it to both variables, uh, but it, uh, that's overkill. You only need to do it to at least one variable. Because the only time that this results in a pitfall is when you've got an integer divided by an integer. By putting this explicit typecast right here, I'm saying treat, temporarily treat a as a double. Make it something greater than it is so that I can multiply it by this integer and store it in this double over here. Uh, and that's, uh, that's absolutely necessary uh, for you know, when you're dealing with integer types and uh, multiplication and stuff like that. Yeah? Good question. Uh, if, they, uh, if they represent doubles, then go ahead and make them doubles. Uh, but doubles are not as precise as an integer. Uh, for example, if I take 1 divided by 3, I would get 1 third, right? Uh, in our heads, that's 1 third. In a computer, however, it's not 1 third. It's 0.3333, and it has a finite precision. It can only re Remember, a double can only represent about 16 to 17 di digits of accuracy. That last de digit over here either might be a 2 or a 1. It rounds up or rounds down depending on how it's representing that number. So if I take this 0.333333, and then some mystery number at the end, and I add it three times, I don't get one. Right? Whereas if, uh, so uh, working with floating point numbers leads to floating point errors and round off errors and stuff like that. Whereas if you've got a number that represent, uh, represents a whole, definitely use an integer then, because uh, you, you don't lose that precision there. You don't have, uh, uh, remember that uh, an integer only has about uh, plus minus 2.147 billion representation, but that's that, that's good enough for most cases. Yeah. You can put point zero, a uh, point five, and it'll be okay. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll work. But I like that zero there. All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you don't like that zero, then <laughs> go ahead. Whatever. All right. Uh, here's another situation example. Say go int x is equal to 3.14. What value will x have, do you think, here? 3. Again, because I declared x to be an integer. And I tried to shove something that was not an integer into an integer. And so truncation occurs. It takes that 0.14, chops it off, and throws it away. That's truncation. It's not, it's not rounding down. It's not rounding up. It's simply just chopping it off and throwing it away. And so it ends up with 3. Uh, the value, uh, value of x is 3, right? because of truncation. Right? Now, other languages, like uh, Java, for example, wouldn't even let you do this. Uh, this, is, this is called an implicit typecast. Note that I didn't put an int in front of it to force that double to become an int, uh, and then so I could assign it to an int. Uh, it's, the C is just doing that for me. It's implicit. Uh, the one above is explicit because I actually had to write out the rules that you should treat A as a double for the purposes of this operation right here. 
Uh, again, most, um, uh, uh, most of these situations come up with division. But if you ever find yourself seeing, oh, well, my result is 0, it's probably because uh, you had an integer divided by an integer somewhere. You did 10 divided by 20, and you expected 0.5, but you got a 0 out of it because of truncation. So check your variable types. Other pitfalls. Pitfalls being you know, mis uh, common uh, uh, mistakes or common errors that you can uh, accidentally get into. Let me go ahead and go with int x is equal to 10, int y is equal to 0. And again, these are in general are terrible variable names, but I, there's demonstration purposes up here. I don't have anything to, uh, to model yet. Uh, let me go ahead and go with another one. Uh, int z is equal to x divided by y. So division, yeah. But uh, truncation is not the issue here. What is the issue? I'm dividing by 0, right? So what's the result of, uh, can, can you do that in math? What is 10 divided by 0? Undefined, exactly. It's undefined uh, if you take a calc course what, and you, you want to take the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity, what would you say it is? It diverges off to infinity. So you might have an argument that, that it's inf. Uh, or something like that, uh, but that, that, that's, not, that's calculus. That's not how it works the computer. Instead, the results are undefined. There are undefined mathematical operations. For example, division by 0 being the most common one. It may result in inf, right, or negative inf, or nan. So, Hopefully everybody understands what inf and, and negative inf, positive infinity, po negative infinity. Uh, and there are situations that you can get yourself into where that's the result. Infinity times 10 is infinity. So any operation that you use after that is also undefined. Infinity plus 0 is infinity. Infinity plus 10 is infinity. So your number will not change. It'll be forever inf uh, or negative inf. NAN is something different. It's an acronym that stands for, what do you think? Not a number, exactly. This is not a number. Right? Uh, and so you might, so if you've got something that's not a number and then you add 10, what do you think the result is? Not a number, right? If, if, you, take it, if you take 10 plus green, green is not a number, 10 plus green is 10 green? No, it, it's not a number still, right? Uh, similar uh, math operations. So for example, uh, let's see, uh, log of 0. Right? Log is, the, this is the natural log. That is, I'll go into math mode here, the natural log of x. There we go. Right? And hopefully that renders for you when you see it on GitHub. Otherwise, you'll just see a bunch of LaTeX there. Uh, know, know, though, that it's the natural log. Uh, th why didn't they write ln? I don't know. They should have. Uh, generally, in computer science, if you have log without a base written under it, you mean base 2, because everything in computer science is binary. Uh, natural log, of course, is base e, which is 2.7, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, so what, if, what happens when you take the log of 0? It, it, it's, it's undefined. If you, if you were to graph it out, what would it look like? Lo uh, a natural log of 0 is going to happen. What, what's going to happen? Well, it's a monotone growing function, but what happens when it approaches 0? Well, when it approaches 1, it hits uh, 0. And so what happens between 0 and 1? It goes down to negative infinity. So this results, results in negative int. All right. Uh, another example would be the square root of negative 1. What's the square root of negative 1? Uh, it's, uh, it's i, right? It's an imaginary number. It's a complex number. Uh, and there are, there's no direct support in C for complex numbers. There are plenty of libraries. There are extensions that you can use. Uh, but it results in NAN. So there are two exa prime examples of where you, uh, these things could arrive, arise, where you've got uh, inf uh, as a result of a numerical operation, where you've got NAN as a result of a numerical operation. Uh, and at this point, I would mention uh, the math library. So you are probably going to need to bring in the math library to do ta uh, you know, uh, tangents. If you want to do square root, if you want to do log, you're, uh, basically anything that you would find on a scientific calculator is going to be there in the math library for you. 
To bring that in, of course, you would need to use include math.h, right? Uh, or in, include math.h uh, in your program. And when you compile, for now, I'm just going to tell you, do this. Use, hyphen, uh, use the flag hyphen lm. Right? lm stands for link in the math library. Uh, this is kind of a, a, an archaic uh, requirement still based on, the, it's because of the way that CSE is set up. If you're doing programming somewhere else on your own computer, you may or may not need to do this flag. Uh, but when you're doing it on CSE, you absolutely have to use this flag to bring in that external math library. All the other libraries, you don't need to do it. This is just a quirk, and it's just something that we have to deal with. Uh, so I understand that when you bring in the math library and want to use the square root function or the sine function or something like that, you need to use the hyphen lm flag. It has lots, uh, lots of basic math functions such as, say, sine. What else would you want? Cosine, tangent, etc., which are all in radians. Keep that in mind. Uh, scientists don't, uh, just like scientists don't usually work in English units, feet, miles, whatever, they, uh, they use metric. Uh, most scientists do not work in degrees. Uh, degrees 0 through, th uh, through 60 degrees, uh, th that, that's, uh, that's an imprecise way of doing things. Instead, you want radians, where a half circle is how many radians? One radian for half circle, so an entire circle, 360 degrees, would be two radians. What is a radian? Pi, right? Uh, two radians is equal to? Two pi. That's where we get pi. Uh, it's, it's half of the circle, right? 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 Yeah, okay. All right. Just remind me. <laughs> so it also, ha also has, say, square root uh, and a few other, other nice functions. How do you know what functions are available? Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, good question. Let me go ahead and, and add a complete example here. Example. So say that we want to compile uh, my awesome program. So gcc hyphen lm my uh, awesome program dot c, something like that. Right? You can also put, I think, LM, uh, hyphen lm at the end, uh, but I would put it here. Right? So there's an example of, of bringing in the math library. You just need to put that flag somewhere. And no space between the l and the m. Yeah. Yep, you have to do both of those things on CSE. Your mileage may vary if you've got a different setup. Right? Uh, and if you're not using the math library at all, it's just a simple input-output program, and you're just using arithmetic, then you don't need to do this. Right? Okay. Uh, so how do you know what functions are available? Google is your friend. Right? So if you search for, say, C, math library, or if I search for math.h, right, I'm going to pull up, uh, probably the first hit on all of these is going to be a C++ reference. Don't worry about it. C++ is a larger programming language that, uh, that still encapsulates all of C. So the uh, documentation will still be OK uh, for, for simple stuff. So check that out. Ooh, lots of nice trig functions. Uh, sine, cosine, tangent, arc, cosine, uh, arc, uh, sine, et cetera. Uh, there, there's the two argument tangent function. Hyperbolic functions, if you need those. Exp, what would that be? It computes the exponential function, e to the x, right? If, uh, it's, instead of, uh, uh, it, it, so it's, it's basically the, uh, the inverse of the natural log. Uh, you've got log, you've got log base 10. A uh, bunch of other things here. Another one, nice one would be, uh, where is pow? Uh, there, pow. If you need to raise to a power, if you need to uh, compute x to the y, then the pow function will do that for you. It takes two arguments. Uh, that, uh, so if you want more details on each one of these, how would you use this? You can click on it, and it, it'll even uh, it'll have the return uh, all the documentations. Uh, that it takes two parameters, the base and the exponent, and it even gives you a nice little example here. Seven raised to the power of three. You use the pow function. Seven raised to the power of three. 
right? So 7, 3 is how we, you would use that. That caret is not valid C. Uh, some programming languages do allow you to use that. Some programming languages allow you to do exponentiation using two stars. Uh, C does not allow any of that. If you want an arbitrary x raised to the y, you need to use the math library here. Now, would you use the math library if you wanted to raise x to the second squared, x squared? You could, but it's probably overkill. Why? Uh, x times x, right? Just use multiplication. And you don't have to bring in that math library. But if you've got a, an, uh, an arbitrary, uh, you know, you want to take 1.5 raised to the 3.8, then yeah, you're going to want to use the, the pow function there. Pow is short for power, right? You're raising it to the power. Uh, th this is what I would suggest uh, doing using uh, Google to look up your documentation. Alternatively, uh, there, there's something called the man pages. And if you're at the command line on CSE, you can type man, uh, I don't know, cosine. Let's find out all about cosine. Man space cosine, and then it, uh, you can scroll down with the up and uh, up down left uh, right uh, uh, up down <laughs> arrows. Uh, you can read all about it. Go back up here. There are several different variations: uh, cosine for longs, cosine for floats. This is the one that you'd probably use most often. It's found in the math library, and it gives you uh, special descriptions and special values, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This man stands for. It's not man as in a male. It stands for, it's short for manual, which gives us our nice, uh, yet another nice uh, uh, acronym that you should memorize, RTM. So what is RTM? It's the flight version. Read the manual, exactly. You get a question, a common question that's already well documented, you might get an answer from a, uh, from a snarky answer from somebody. I'll never give you a snarky answer. Uh, but if you do get a snarky answer of RTM or RTFM, if they're very adamant about it, uh, then, then uh, that's reading the manual. And it comes from this. The man pages are the manual pages. If you want to know about SQRT, right? there it is. And if you do, uh, there, there's the documentation for what happens on negative numbers. It returns NAN and generates a domain error for any x less than 0. Right? So I'm reading the man pages right here. I'm RTMing right there. Uh, and you can do the more modern approach of just Googling for it, and then that'll pull up nice HTML formatted pages of the man pages. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> yeah. What is that called? Is it how, how to Google? Oh, OK. Let me Google that for you. And so. All right, so I don't know, um, uh, uh, square root C programming. All right, and then get the link. You share this link. And then it's just a little simple animation of going to Google and <laughs> typing it out. All right. So ni nice little uh, uh, modern day middle finger to people. All right. So those, th those are basic variables. Yeah, go ahead. Any function in the standard library, yeah. Uh, if, if, of course, if the function doesn't exist, the man pages won't exist. Uh, and if it's, if it's an undocumented thing, then the man pages won't exist. Uh, but the, the, they're, uh, for the vast majority of stuff that you'll encounter, the man pages are there. Or you can just search for it and Google it. So let's go ahead and turn our heads here to basic I.O. or basic input-output. So I.O. is, again, uh, in input-output. Uh, what, what I'm going to we'll, we'll start with interactive input-output, where we prompt a user for simple input, read it in, and display results. So I'll start with the input, and then we can get to the output later on here. Basic input. So you can, you, uh, you can prompt uh, a user for input using, like we did before, printf uh, with a helpful message of what you're looking for. Right. This is uh, the, the user then responds, uh, responds with, uh, using the what's called the 
standard input. Input, there we go. I.e., what is the standard input? The keyboard. Right. Uh, the standard input is, uh, there is a technical reason we call it the standard input because it's not, it doesn't always have to be a keyboard. You can be, uh, in Unix, at the command line, you can pipe stuff in, you can simulate a keyboard. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be a keyboard. In fact, the vast majority of programs are not meant for human consumption. Uh, programs automate things. So you don't want to always sit there and have to ask a human, should I continue with my operations? No, you want to set up a program that automates things, that it does things automatically. And so uh, in that case, that, that's why we need something more general uh, for standard input than just somebody sitting there clunking the keys at a keyboard. Right? Uh, but for our purposes, uh, it, uh, uh, that, that's what we're talking about. Right? Uh, you can use scanf uh, to read input from the user. Right? Uh, scanf, uh, scanf uh, stands for, scanf stands for scan formatted. So the F there, that, uh, that's where this comes in. It, it expects a certain format. If you want to read in an integer, then you have to specify the format of that integer. If you want to read in a double, you need to specify the format for that double. To keep things simple, we're only going to read one thing at a time. So in general, only read one uh, value at a time. Don't, uh, you, there, there are plenty of, of hacks and ways that you can uh, read multiple values at the same time. Uh, you'll get into a lot of pitfalls with white space and, uh, and, and um, uh, unterminated buffers and stuff like that. So keep it simple. Ask for one thing, read one thing. Then if you need a second thing, ask for the second thing, read for the second thing, and then move on. We'll look at a much better way of doing this later on uh, using uh, command line arguments. Uh, but uh, to, uh, to format the input, you use a uh, placeholder. Those placeholders are one of three things. For doubles, uh, to, read a, to read a double, use percent %LF. LF here is for a long float. Don't worry about that. Always use LF. To read a, an int, use percent %d. D here is for decimal. Uh, it would make a lot more sense, I agree, if it were i for an integer, uh, that if, they, if it matched the variable name, right? Uh, and then use percent %d for a double, because d begins with double, right? Uh, th those are mean different things. We're, well, first, first of all, percent %d means de uh, 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 a decimal value. Uh, or a, a digit value. LF means long float. So uh, just uh, understand that not everything is going to make sense. Ju that's just how it is. All right? And for one, the one thing that does make sense, however, is to read a single character, a, ch a single char value, use. Now, if this one makes sense, what do you think? C, exactly. All right? Not only that, but uh, you provide scanf with a variable uh, uh, where the, va the, red in, the red in value should be stored. Right. So I'm going to come back to that, but let's go ahead and go into, uh, into code mode here and look at a quick example. Uh, we've seen a couple of uh, an example with uh, the full program as before, but let's go ahead and read in uh, an integer. Let's prompt uh, the user for a, an integer and read it in. So the first thing we need is a variable to hold that value that we're going to prompt the user for. They enter in 42, they enter in, what, uh, they match the keyboard or whatever. Uh, what, uh, what, let's prompt them, prompt them. Uh, so uh, printf, please enter an integer. You can be as polite as you want. You can omit the please if you want, as long as it's clear what, you're looking at, uh, what they're looking for. If you don't have a prompt like this, when you run your program, it'll just sit there with a blinking cursor. And the user will not have any indication of what they should be doing. So prompt them for input. Give them a hint. Uh, that's all part of uh, UX, which is a user experience. And make sure that you are telling the user what you, what you expect of them. Uh, that doesn't prevent them from violating your expectations, which we'll talk about later. But uh, at least they know what they should be doing. Now read in the input. 
So I'm going to use scanf. And because I'm reading in an integer, what should the uh, placeholder be? Percent %d. And then following that, remember commas separate uh, arguments. So this is, the, uh, this is the first thing. This is the second thing. I'm going to put in ampersand x. So the name of the variable is x, ampersand there. There's a technical reason we do that that we're going to wait for much later on after we've got pointers and memory uh, allocation, memory management, and stuff like that. That's a, that's a referencing operator. This is a pass by reference uh, function. Uh, it needs access to the memory location of X. Uh, don't worry about any of that for now. The takeaway from this is that when you use scanf for now, always, uh, always use a, uh, an ampersand in front of the variable. Uh, if you omit that, it'll compile, it'll run, but it won't give you the correct results. Uh, and it, it'll, it'll, it might even crash. It'll end up with a segmentation fault. Uh, and your program will crash, and you won't know why. You come back, and oh, I forgot the ampersand. That's uh, if you if I hear if if I hear anybody say that I, I've got a segmentation fault, that's the first thing I know what they did. They, oh, you probably forgot your ampersand, at least in the first couple of weeks here. Right? So, do not forget to add an ampersand in front in front of the variable. Again, don't worry about the technical reasons now. Uh, we'll worry about those later. Okay. Uh, let's go back into code mode here, and let's do the same thing. But uh, let's go ahead and, and prompt them for a a double. Help me along here. Let's prompt and read a double value. Well, first of all, I need the var a variable to store it in, so I'll go ahead and go with double uh, percentage. Maybe maybe that's representing a percentage discount or something like that. Uh, percentage discount is. I'll go ahead and call it that. Okay. Now let's prompt them, printf, please enter a discount percentage. Right? <laughs> Giving them a nice little cue, uh, clue about what, to, uh, what, to, uh, what I'm expecting of them. Okay? Now uh, I use scanf, but it's a different type of variable now, right? It's a double. So what, what placeholder should I use? Percent %lf. Right? Percent %lf. Failure to use the correct uh, 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 placeholder will, read, uh, will lead to unexpected results. If you're trying to read it in an integer and you put, give it a placeholder LF for a floating point number, you're not going to get the results that you're expecting. You're probably going to get garbage in that case. If you are trying to read in a double and then you use a, an integer, you're probably going to get truncation. Uh, if you use the percent %d for the placeholder, you're probably going to get truncation. They enter 3.5 and you end up reading only 3. So make sure that you are using the correct uh, placeholder values. Now again, is this correct? Should I just put in the variable name? Ampersand. Right? Don't forget your ampersand for now. Uh, failure, uh, failure to include the ampersand. Ampersand uh, will re lead to a it's called a segment segmentation fault, right? Because basically you're trying to, you're violating memory. Uh, you're trying to read memory that doesn't belong to you or that might not even exist. And the operating system is going to say, "No, I'm not going to let you uh, access memory that doesn't belong to you." And it kills your program. And it, uh, the, uh, and on the screen, it ends up be, uh, reading segmentation fault. Right? The segmentation is that you are uh, there, there are segments of memory, and you're trying to access a segment of memory that doesn't belong to you. So it's a fault. Yeah? Oh, no. D even if you run it as admin, it's going to fault out. Yeah. Yep. All right. Basic output this is very similar. You can use printf. That is print. Now, what do you think the F stands for again? Formatted. Same thing. That's why it's printf, scanf. It's not just print. It's not just scan. It's printf and scanf. All right? There is no such thing as print in C. There is no such thing as scan in C. It has to be one of the formatted ones uh, to print to the standard output, i.e., the screen. All right? So again, a standard output is something, diff uh, something more general. Uh, standard input and standard output are both generic buffers 
on any POSIX compliant system. Uh, so the vast majority of systems out there, you've got this special thing that's uh, standard output and this special thing for every program that's standard input, uh, and they're all independent, and it's basically just a file. You can write, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's all a buffer that you can write data to, and uh, stuff is stored in the buffer until something, uh, something reads it off. Again, don't worry about that. For our purposes, the standard output is the screen. Uh, whether or not you're in PuTTY, a terminal, or whatever, that's your screen. If you, uh, if you use printf, you'll actually see it being printed out on that screen. Right? You have similar placeholders using printf. For example, to print the value of a double, use. Now, it's almost the same here, but a little bit different. Just percent %f. Right? You don't need to use percent %lf. Uh, and you, you might be able to, but you might not get the results that you're looking for. Uh, I, I would just recommend to use f. Fortunately, if you want to print an, uh, uh, an int uh, to print the value of an int, use, it's the same, percent %d. And copy paste here. If you want to print the value of a char, fortunately there it's also the same, percent %c. However, you do not use the ampersand with printf. Right? So only two major differences there, that the uh, placeholder for doubles is a little bit different. And with scanf, you use the ampersand. For printf, you do not. All right? Just understand, uh, under, understand it, that you have to do it like that. Uh, when we get on to functions, and uh, the difference between pass by reference and pass by uh, value, then you'll understand the difference a little bit deeper. Until then, that it, it is what it is, and that's what you got to do. All right? Otherwise, it will not work. Uh, let's look at a really quick example here of printf. Right? So let's go ahead and create some variables here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and copy the vari variables we had from before. Uh, int x is I'll set it equal to 10. Pi 3.14 and a first initial. So let's use printf. Uh, the value stored in x is, and then I can put a placeholder anywhere I want in this, uh, in, in this formatted string here. If I'm going to pr print the value stored in x, then that's an integer, so I need to use percent %d. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put in a special character there that we'll come back to here in a second. Uh, and then, uh, if you, uh, however, you can put multiple placeholders in there, by the way, if you want to. And I'll show you an example here in a second. But for all the placeholders that you need, you need a corresponding variable to go along with it. The value stored in x will be formatted, printf formatted. It'll be formatted, and this placeholder here will be replaced with whatever value is stored in x. So in this case, it would print the value stored in x is 1, 0, and then that backslash forward slash. Backslash n will end the line. That's how we get an end line character in C. Uh, if, if I'm just sitting here typing at my keyboard and I go enter, that gives me an end line character, but only in my code editor. How do I tell uh, the operating system to go to the next line? I need a special character. In this case, it's, high, uh, it's, it's backslash n. Other characters like that would be, say, tabs. If I want a tab, what do you think? Backslash t, right? What if I want a backslash? Backslash, backslash, right, exactly. What if I wanted two backslashes? Then I need four of them, right? Uh, I need to double it up. So this tab's over, and I'll say uh, my initial is uh, percent %c, the, the placeholder for uh, a, a single character, uh, and pi is percent %f. And so I'll put, print in my uh, first initial and pi. So there's an example of using two placeholders in the same print statement. You can use as many placeholders as you want, as long as the number of variables that you provide over here in your list matches the number of placeholders that you have over here. Also, the order matters here. This one will match the first placeholder. The second one matches the second placeholder. So if I start conflating all of the, uh, the, the, the placeholders and start using percent %c for uh, integers, and if I, if I switched around those two placeholders, for example, I'd get completely different results. 
Uh, it would try to interpret the first initial as an integer or a floating point number, in which case it would go to the ASCII text table. And what's the value of capital C? Well, cap uh, capital A is 65, so B, C, it would be 67. It would end up printing 67.000, right? Uh, and that's because it's trying to treat that character as a number and print it, uh, print it like that. So if you start conflating those things, you're going to get weird results. Make sure that everything matches. Okay. And the final, uh, and, and uh, let's see, yeah. All right, that's good. By default, printf prints six decimals of accuracy. So if I were to actually run this code up here, I would end up a print, it would end up printing pi as 3.14, and then there are six decimals of accuracy. So what's left over? Zero, zero, zero. It would end up printing four zeros after that. If you want it to have different precision, less precision, more precision, you can do that. Uh, you, you can provide placeholder modifiers to get more or less precision and to format your numbers better. So let's go ahead and go into code mode here. In fact, at this point, I'm going to introduce you to another tool. Uh, we've got 10 minutes left here. Ruple. There we go. Oftentimes, I'll switch over to a live coding demonstration using uh, this tool called REPL. Uh, REPL stands for something. It's uh, repetition. Uh, okay, REPL. Repeti uh, read, evaluate, print loop. There. Uh, so uh, th 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 this site, REPL.IT, uh, it has uh, a support for a lot of different languages. It basically just has a compiler built into the, it, it's actually making a, uh, it, it's taking the code that I write in the left pane over here, you know, uh, giving it to their server, it compiles, and then the results are spit back over here. It's just a quick way, uh, get rid of that, there we go. It's just a quick way for me to demonstrate some code. I, uh, if, if you want to write some quick code and test it, this is a great tool. It's not a good development tool, though. Uh, because how do you bring in external libraries? How do you have multiple files? You can do it, but it, it's a real pain. Right? It's not a complete development environment. Uh, it's just REPL. Right? So let me go ahead and get rid of this. And let's go ahead and define pi, or double. Pi is equal to 3.1415. I'll only define it out to four decimal places. Let's look at uh, printf, percent f. And I'll end the line so that it looks nice and pretty. And let's go ahead and run this. Again, if, it, if it's going to print out six decimals of accuracy, what would you expect it to print? 3.1415, 0, 0. Oops. Oh, what, what was my mistake? Comma pi. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and run it. There we go. Uh, and indeed, there are two decimal places of, uh, of accuracy, uh, of two uh, zero, uh, additional zeros over there. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you. Now. You can use different placeholders or uh, placeholder uh, modifiers here. Suppose that you want 10 digits of accuracy, 0 0.10. That will give me 10 digits of accuracy. Don't forget your F. And this will print 3.1415, uh, sorry, 3.1415 with 10 digits of accuracy. Well, since I've only defined four digits and it wants to print 10 digits of accuracy total, how many zeros is it going to print? Six. Right, let's see it. There. One, two, three, four, five, six de decimals of, uh, of, of accuracy there, right? What if you want less or fewer uh, de uh, decimals of accuracy? Say I, I only need pi out to two decimal places. What do you think is going to happen? 3.14. Right? Oh, and I forgot my end line characters. Let me do that so that it looks nice. There, 3.14. What if I have three decimals of accuracy? What would be your expectations here be? 3.14, one, but it won't print that five, right? What do you, so what do you think it does with it? It could truncate it. Let's find out. Printf ends up doing what? Rounding. That did not change the value of pi. It didn't round the variable pi. It only rounded it and, uh, uh, for the purposes of printing it. So printf will result in rounding, 
but it won't change the variables. So if you're doing uh, calculations and you want rounding, you're going to have to do that yourself. Right? You're going to have to use the math library to use the round function. Right? Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, you, you, uh, you, can, you can also uh, print a total number of characters. So what I mean by that is, let, let me go ahead and give you another example. Uh, percent 10.3f, and then end the line so that it looks nice. Let's, let's go ahead and run this and figure out what that means. All right. So three decimals of accuracy, just like the previous example. So it prints 3.14 and then rounds it for that last digit and gives you three digits of accuracy. But now it's moved over. By how much has it moved over? One, two, three, four, five characters. Why? That 10 in front is a modifier that says, print at least 10 columns. So it says, OK, I'll print at least 10 columns. Let me start figuring that out. 3, that's one column. Point it includes the decimal in that. And then three digits of accuracy. That's 5 total. So what it does is that, OK, well, 5 is not enough. I need to print at least 10. So five spaces and then uh, the actual number. If you do this again with, I don't know, 20, How many spaces would you expect? 15. And there will be, uh, yeah, there, there are 15 spaces here that are being printed. Uh, you could put a negation in front of it. Uh, this is uh, aligned right. And if you want to align it left, you can put a negation in front of it. And so this is align left. Let me go ahead and run it. And you'll notice that. This last one is a line to the left, and you can't see it because you can't see spaces, but there are five uh, trailing spaces there. Uh, to, just to prove it to you, let me go ahead and print something else. Hi. And run it, and you see that there are five spaces between the number and high. So you can left justify it, you can right justify it, you can do a lot of things. You can also, uh, you, it also works with. Uh, integers, integers. So int x is equal to 10. Printf, I don't know, a minimum of 10 columns. Uh, D, end the line, and we'll print it out x. And so there, one zero, that's only two columns. So how many spaces are coming in front of it? Eight, right? A minimum of 10 columns is what this means, OK? All right. So that's an example of how you can do it, uh, how, how you can, uh, how you can um, left justify it, print more decimals. What if you get crazy? Let's go ahead and print out, I don't know, 50 decimals of accuracy of pi. And let's go ahead and, uh, oh, sorry, what did I forget? Point five, 50 decimals of accuracy. OK, so there it is, 3.1500000. And then a bunch of random garbage. Why? Yeah, it, 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 it's precision. Remember, a double can represent how many digits of precision? About 16 or 17. Those zeros there, that's its representable area, right? 3.1415, and then zeros. And then after that, it's all just random garbage. It tries to interpret it however it can. So again, remember. You've got a limitation on the size of integers. You've got a limitation on the precision of doubles. Uh, for the most part, those three variables are going to get you through 90% of this class. If you ever have need to go off and start calculating the circumference of the known universe down to a, nano, a nanometer, then you might need to bring in some sort of a, or, or calculate pi out to a million digits, you might need to bring in some sort of external library, a multi-precision library. But that's basic input and output. Yeah? Let's run it again and see if we get the same garbage, at least. OK, well, at least it's consistent garbage. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's doing something behind the scenes. Uh, what, what it's doing is probably undefined behavior. That if I took the same code and put it on another system with a different compiler, I might get different garbage. All right. See you on Wednesday.
Pemdas. 